Hi! Maybe you've purchased the Jaxual lenses, or maybe you're just curious about how they work. So, I promised I would do a tutorial video, so we're here now, and I'm going to jump over to the captain's chair to show you guys how to use these vintage lenses in Blender. And reminder, these are real optics. This is pushing the boundary. It's pushing cycles. Get ready for the caveats. <laughs> Hey guys, I forgot to mention too, I made the 28mm lens free for you guys to try. It's the worst sufferer of the floating point rounding error. Um, so that's why I decided, hey, you know what, I'm just going to make this one free. So you guys can try this optical setup method and see what you think. It's, it's pretty cool that it works. Give it a try. It's free on the Blender Market page. Vintage photography lenses. Wouldn't it be cool if you can use this in your renders for a little more realism and photo realism, you can. And I'm gonna show you how to use the Jaxual lenses that I've built up so far based on vintage designs to use in your renders for realism. They look so good, they look so good. So first things first with importing one of the Jaxual cameras, let's organize our scene a little bit. I know all of this stuff has to do with just the main scene of everything, except let's pull the camera outside of this box, it says scene. So now the camera's in its own little world here. Uh, he's organized, just, just like to have it flat. Let's go ahead, make this a little bit smaller and focus on the actual layout of the scene. Tree, woman, lights, background, and then of course, camera. I can see she's standing about the origin point, zero, zero, zero. We're gonna wanna use that origin point for our camera so let's go ahead and just select everything, everything in the scene, and hit G key and just roughly place this camera to be at the zero point. And it doesn't have to be perfect unless you're using the 28 millimeter. That one's very sensitive. I'm also gonna move it down in Z. So now, hey, our camera's the zero point. The scene looks the damn same, but the camera's at zero, zero, zero. It's really important for mitigating the effects of this floating point rounding error, which plagues some of these lens builds. Let's go ahead and import our Helios clone, the Helium 420 58 millimeter. So I am going to append the project file that has Helium 420 58 millimeter, and I'm gonna grab the entire collection for it and make sure it lands in the scene folder. There we go. Okay, so it's float it's right here in our hierarchy and the base camera's below it. I say, "Hey, I don't really want to guess the rest of the rotation, so let's click that camera that we just imported. Let's then click um, the ca the base camera, the standard camera we were just using." And we'll do the little copy attributes or copy rotation or copy scale trick. Um, the, that is a plugin you can find uh, for free. Okay, so now we're now we have the Blender standard camera looking down the barrel of our actual camera, our Jaxual camera. Let's tell the scene settings here on the right to use the Helium 420 camera instead. Oh my gosh, it's upside down. Well, of course it is, we just copied the rotation. And when lenses, when, when optical lenses take light in and pass it to the image sensor, it actually flips it along the, uh, the horizontal axis. So vertically it's flipped. You can fix this really easy. Let's grab the camera, double tap Z so it's rotating around, around the local Z axis, and then we'll just punch in 180. Okay, now we have about the same frame, but why is it darker? Uh, now that we're using lenses and real apertures, you're subject to different amount of light, different amount of light hitting the sensor uh, because of because of your F number of your optical system and you know your aperture that's involved. And you'll see as I edit the aperture in scale, I'm just gonna hit S on the keyboard, scale it down. I want a tighter aperture, less depth of field. Oh, but the image is getting darker. This is like real photography. This is how real lenses work. 
I have set the, the default scale of all of these apertures for the lenses to be the widest they can be. So then no, every time you half the scale of the size, um, I have to calculate how many stops of light that is actually impeding. I will get to that. I'm just very busy. <laughs> okay, so we have a nice image. Okay, so I've pulled up the render settings here. And just like a real camera, again, we need to use the color management uh, window here. This, this is almost acting like the gain, ISO of a camera, um, how sensitive it, it is to light. So I can scale it down, get accurate exposure. I can scale it up, get accurate exposure. Let's place it right around. That looks like a good exposure here. Oh, but I can still see the light in the scene. I'm not sure. I want to see the lights. Let's go ahead and click on the light. We'll go to the object properties and just turn off the transmission box and it disappears. I'll do the same for the flat light too, even though it's not in the scene or it's not in the shot, uh, just to be safe. And there we go. So what's the last piece of the puzzle here? We need to, we need to focus our camera. Currently, our camera's not perfectly focused on her and we need to move our empty, our focus controller. And so let's do the little trick where we click on her face to put the 3D cursor there. We have the focus controller selected and I'm gonna press Shift S and press selection of cursor. So now the focus is snapped. It is perfectly on her eye or forehead. She is in focus and we start to see the depth of field affecting the tree. That looks really great so far. Let's zoom in on some of this bokeh now. You start to see it's warping. It's warping in a very nice way. It's looking very turly whirly is the science term, I think. Here we are on B&H Photo. We're looking at, they have a nice article here about understanding bokeh and how it's just so beautiful to play with. But then they have a section about uh, corrected corrected uh, optical systems for overcorrected, undercorrected, right here. So a few of these lenses I have have the overcorrected edge to them, just like this one in the center. Uh, you can see it's got a brighter edge in the sides and it falls off on the other side. Um, currently the helium has, uh, it's somewhere between corrected and undercorrected where the outsides start to fringe a little bit less I'm hoping to get it to overcorrected, so I need to play with some more geometry to get it to the other side, because I think this looks beautiful and realistic to me. How many, how many pieces of glass do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six pieces of glass. When the light enters one side, it has to leave the back side. So each piece of glass has two, two transmission passes. So in our render settings, if we had anything less then 12, all of a sudden it starts looking really weird. Only, only certain light is reaching the sensor. We need to bump this up above 12 just to be safe. Let's go to 15 for total. Let's go to 15 for transmission. And then the rest is up to you, depending on how many, how many internal balances you need. If you have a, if you're like an inside room sort of um, environment, then that's really gonna affect it too. Let's turn off our indirect passes and you'll start to see a little more noise and stuff. This can be tailored as well. I like to find a sweet spot for the specific render I'm doing, whether it's a photograph or a animation pass. And then you can filter glossy too. I don't think I had any glossy settings, um, but this would be for any other, any other glass you might have in the scene like windows. Go ahead. If you want animate the camera, let's jump to a top view. I'm going to get rid of this properties window for a second. And let's say we wanted to animate the camera. I can pull this quite a good distance before I start getting plagued by fuzziness, fogginess, like the 28 millimeter does, but that's why it's free. So here's an example of a very complicated scene. And if you notice, the camera is hovering right around very, very close to zero, zero, zero. The 35 and millimeters and up don't suffer as much from the floating point error as the 28. That's why I made the 28 millimeter 